And it was that time when the country's leaders in the Kremlin were trying to make a decision to bring or not to bring the troops into the town. Until January 19th, Gorbachev and the Kremlin did not interfere in the situation, despite an adequate military garrison being located in Baku, just like the internal forces, which were able to take control of the situation over a short period of time. Unlike Sungait, the Soviet army was late in Baku, not by three hours, but a whole week. Moreover, to stop the pogroms, it was enough to let in the forces of the Baku army garrison and the internal troops. The troops entered the town, seized with pogroms, not to stop them, but to prevent the final seizure of power by the People's Front of Azerbaijan, which was planned for January 20th. From an article in Moscow News, February 4th, 1990. The troops entered the town, seized with pogroms, not to stop them, but to prevent the final seizure of power by the People's Front of Azerbaijan, from an article in Sabsednik Weekly. But why, then, were the Armenian pogroms allowed? Why did those pogroms, which were committed with silent approval of the authorities, become the reason to engage troops? On January 20th, the Soviet troops finally entered the town. They entered when the Armenians were entirely expelled from Baku. On February 13th, 1990, the Supreme Council of the Armenian SSR made a decision to condemn the pogroms in Baku and other areas of the Azerbaijani SSR, acknowledging them as the continuation of genocide towards Armenians, as well as demanded from the Supreme Council of the USSR to acknowledge and condemn the genocide of Armenians in Baku and other populated areas of the Azerbaijani SSR in January 1990. The UN Convention on Prevention and Punishment for the Crime of Genocide states, in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such. A, killing members of the group. B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. The bloody week in Baku remained largely unrecognized by the Soviet people. The events in Baku were covered very poorly and in a biased manner. The foreign media was covering the pogroms in Baku more enthusiastically. Radio stations Liberty and BBC were airing daily updates. On January 19, 1990, the New York Times published an article which said, Azerbaijan is not Lithuania. Nationalists in Azerbaijan also talk of independence but their protest includes bloody pogroms against their Armenian neighbors. On July 27, 1990, in the same newspaper, an editorial presented an open letter to the international community signed by nearly 150 renowned foreign scholars and human rights defenders who named the Armenian pogroms in Baku racism, threatening the future of mankind. Seven years later, the events in Baku were reflected in a report presented at the 17th session of the UN Committee of Elimination of Discrimination Against Women on July 17th to 25th, 1997, which said, For five days in January of 1990, the Armenian community of Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, were killed, tortured, robbed, and humiliated. Pregnant women and babies were molested. Little girls were raped in front of their parents' eyes. Christian crosses were burned on their backs, and they were abused for their Christian faith. On March 5th, a closed session of the USSR Supreme Council was held, where a number of top 
Soviet officials presented the horrifying details of the Baku massacre and spoke candidly of the tragedy. But those details never appeared in the press. Twenty years have passed since the pogroms in Baku and exodus of Armenians. All this time, the essence of the Black January of 1990 has been cynically warped. The traces of the policy to exterminate Armenians, in this case, the native population of Baku, are being deleted from history. This is the so-called Shahid Ali in contemporary Baku, where the pogrom makers, murderers, and rapists are buried. High-ranking guests arriving in Baku are obliged to visit the area and lay a wreath to the eternal flame. There are practically no Armenians left in Azerbaijan. Xenophobia and hatred towards Armenians have been made the state policy of Azerbaijan. In view of the whole world, Christian cemeteries and monuments are being demolished. All this is an alarm to the international community. It says that a stable and just peace in the South Caucasus is not possible until the organizers of perpetrators of the genocide of Armenians in Azerbaijan and in Nagorno-Karabakh in 1988-1992 are made responsible. This is what all those who advocate for Azerbaijan's claims on Nagorno-Karabakh should be aware of. They inflame Azerbaijan's appetite and spur its authorities to organize new acts of genocide in the region of the South Caucasus. Not a single crime committed by Azerbaijan against Armenians has ever received due legal or political assessment. Not a single criminal has ever been named or punished. The Nuremberg for Baku is still ahead.